Welcome to this video tutorial. In this video, we will talk about hair in Unity. We'll talk about shaders and different tools that can help us overcome some barriers when rendering hair in Unity. We'll be talking about Advanced Hair Shader Pack, Vertex Motion, More 3D with its character system MCS Male and Female, Hair Shader, Hair Shader Simple, Hair Designer, and Puppet 3D. First, let's have a look at these different characters here and what kind of hair we can actually import from different tools. First thing to take a look at is whether your hair mesh is separate from your character. Tools like iClone and Dust Studio, you usually get a hair mesh that is separate from the rest of the body, which means it has separate UV mapping and you can apply a different shader to the rest of the body. And that's really important if you want to have control over how your hair looks. Now, if you have a character, for example, here from Render People, you can see it's all just one object and the hair is not separate. So any changes you make to this material, you will then affect the whole body and not just the hair. The only change you could make is maybe go into the texture and start drawing on the hair part here. But this would be probably not very successful in, in terms of changing the hairstyle completely or changing the way it is being rendered. So it is always important to take a look whether the hair is separate from the body. One other thing to note is whether when you remove the hair, whether there's actually a mesh underneath. In some cases, for optimization, nothing is rendered underneath. This is a character from Adobe Fuse, and it is something to keep in mind, especially if we want to add our own hair strands to the character. All right, there's a couple other minor differences between the different models, but one thing that is important is whether there's any rig applied to the character and to the hair. Now, this is especially important for longer hair. So here, this is Izzy from my clone. You can download her for free from the Unity Asset Store. And if we select our hair, you can see there's just one bone here and that ties the hair basically to the, the rest of the rig of the body. Now this is sort of problematic when we want to animate the character. And then the hair pokes into the rest of the body. So one thing we can do, we can use a tool like Puppet 3D and add a basic rig to the hair. I covered this in a different tutorial. And with an animation, we can then just move the hair so that it doesn't intersect with the body. One other thing to note is when we have long hair is that it's more realistic if the hair actually moves along with body movements. So if we animate our character, then we would want the hair to also just swing back and forth just a little bit. And for this, we can use Vertex Motion. Now, Vertex Motion is a shader-based soft body system, which means it's not fully uh, physics-based, but it uses a shader to create the movement of the hair in this case. Now, you can also use this for any you know, body fat or anything like that, or for other objects that are not related to characters. But in this case, we're just using it for this ponytail here. Now, uh, we added a Vertex Motion script here to the ponytail. And then I can just uh, paint sort of what kind of areas we want to affect. And we can then add uh, what's called vertex motion sensors to then affect those areas. And we can change things like gravity and damping, bouncing, and so on. And we can set colliders, uh, gravity settings, and so on. So there's a lot of customizability. And it only took me about 10 minutes to set this up here. I've only used vertex motion for a few test projects but we can have a look at what this looks like. Now, if I move Izzy around, you can see the hair bounces just a little bit, probably even just a little bit too much, but you can see sort of the effect and obviously you can fine tune this a lot. Move her around. I did the same with this strain of hair here. We could then also add it just probably to these other strains of hair that are just hanging around. You can see one little problem here is that even though I set up colliders for her face, the hair strain still intersects with her face just a little bit. So that's one thing I couldn't get to work yet, but it's probably just a matter of practice and uh, setting up the characters properly. But so far, I'm really happy with the results. And the same also works if we animate the character. So I added a head movement script. Now you can see the problem again with the hair intersecting. But this, this is uh, then something where I would have to use Puppet 3D to to 
rig the hair and and during the animation I would have to make sure that the hair stays out of the the body. So those tools in conjunction, Vertex 3D and Puppet 3D can really help with some out of the box characters like iClone and Dust Studio to really help us uh, add some more realism to those characters and the animations that we apply. Next, let's have a look at the different shader options that we have now here. From right to left, this is the advanced hair shader character. This is the standard shader with, in this case, a double-sided variation of the standard shader. This is a more 3D character with, uh, or this is a Dust Studio character with more 3D shaders applied. This is the hair shader simple. And this is the hair shader. Okay, so let's have a look at each one individually. So it is important to note that when you set up your shader, there's oftentimes a lot of slots here for different textures. Now, when we import a character from, let's say, Da Studio or iClone, or maybe even Fuse, then oftentimes we only have a few options for textures that we get. In this case here, for the ponytail, we have a diffuse, diffuse opacity, and then some metallic alpha, and uh, that's about it. And that's already a lot, so sometimes with DAS you only get a transparency or a opacity map and a diffuse texture. So when you see all those hair shaders, there's a lot of slots that we cannot really cover. So we don't have a specular map, we don't have opacity maps, height maps, and all these other things that could enhance the visuals of our, our hair. So to keep that in mind when you want to use hair in Unity. So we have to differentiate between users who can create those maps themselves and users who cannot. Now, if you can create those maps that yourself, there's only really one option for you, and that is the Advanced Hair Shader Pack. Because if you can actually follow those instructions, here explaining sort of what kind of custom textures you need and what each of the channels of these textures, what kind of information they need, then you will get the best visual results with the Advanced Hair Shader Pack. Let's have a look here. There's a number of, so there's three different approaches to the rendering of hair, and we have double-sided variations and even mobile variations. And uh, that's a, a lot of customization. And you can see when you just look at all the different hair here that the, uh, the highlights here of that hair of the, the first character just look uh, just more realistic compared to any of the other characters where we don't have anything properly set up. Now, don't get me wrong, some of those shaders also have those same slots here, but I feel like the overall quality you can achieve with this Advanced Hair Shader Pack is definitely um, better than the, the other options. Now, here actually, this is not ideal because I actually didn't create custom textures, but I just slapped on the standard textures that came with the pack. That's why uh, this is not properly UV map for this for this mesh, so here at the bottom, and also the back of the hair is uh, looks looks so dull. So I'm really just looking for the highlights up here and sort of how what what we can achieve in a best case scenario. All right, let's have a look here at this character. Now this character just uses the standard shader for Unity, but in this case it's a double sided version. So you can see it's quite a big difference that with the one sided shader you can see there's a lot of a lot of hair missing here in the back, and uh, Unity usually doesn't come with a standard. A double sided shader, but you can simply download more 3D for free on the asset store. If you download MCS male or female, then you also get a, uh, a set of shaders a skin shader, a hair shader, and also a double sided standard shader if you don't want to create it yourself. So if you then go to more 3D, you have a standard double-sided shader that you can use, which is absolutely identical to the, to the one I wrote, but there's really not much of a difference. The visual result will be absolutely the same, and it will help a lot, especially with like characters from Dust Studio, where one-sided rendering of the hair really looks terrible. But overall, if you just want a quick and easy way without having to set up any custom textures, standard shader already does a fairly decent job for some hairstyles. And I have to say that because there's just some hairstyles where you, regardless of what you do, whether you do a handstand or like try all the different shaders, you will just not get any good visual results. Now, if you have Dust Studio characters, a good way to identify the hairstyles that you can import from Dust Studio is to have a look at the different hair packs from 
uh, from Morph 3D because those are the same hairstyles and the same characters. And if you look at the hair packs that, that you can purchase for, MC, uh, for the MCS male or female, then you already know which hairstyles will generally work in Unity. All right, so this is a slightly different shader, but this one is also available for free with uh, Morph 3D. But this one is uh, called here Volant Variance, and there is a, a skin shader and a standard shader, which is a standard hair shader, which I think looks slightly be uh, better. And if you have no additional maps and you really just want to use one shader with your diffuse texture, even though it has a lot of different slots, even without tweaking anything, I feel like this uh, standard hair shader looks the best out of the box with a lot of different characters. So this is probably the first one I would try if I don't have any additional maps, like a specular map or something like that. All right. This one here is the uh, hair shader simple. And I think the big strength of this one is that you can add a different color to the hair tips so that if you want multicolored hair, you can do that simply by uh, adding the color here. There's different variants of it. Uh, extreme and specular and, and a number of others. And all of these support at least some sort of uh, different hair tips uh, so that you can really have more stylish hair for your characters. Now, in order to understand what's going on with these shaders, you would have to go to the uh, Unity Asset Store page, and there's some video tutorials on, Unity, uh, on the use of the shader in Unity that you can follow along. And it will basically explain to you sort of here that this is the base color and the alpha is the gloss, the amount of gloss, and so on. So you have a, a number of options that you can use uh, with, with this hair shader. However, you would probably need a, a solution for anti-aliasing because uh, as the author recommends, um, otherwise the hair looks quite choppy and, and blocky. All right, and lastly, it's a, it's the uh, hair shader by uh, TAECG. And again, you have a number of options for basic and for more advanced hair shaders with a lot of different uh, texture slots here. Again, if you don't have any of these, then uh, I think out of the box, the, the hair still looks uh, quite nice. But you could also just use the Morph 3D shader. And if you have all those maps, then I would probably prefer using the Advanced Hair Shader Pack. All right, and that's uh, it for shaders for now. It's really just a very brief overview. And it's really just a matter of trying the different options with uh, any of the hairstyles and trying to find out which kind of style you like the most and which one uh, sort of works with the kind of texture maps that you have available. Because oftentimes when you've just purchased a character, maybe also on a 3D marketplace, you will probably not have all those different texture maps. So unless you go into Photoshop or GIMP and create some of those yourself, then uh, you will be stuck with uh, just some very basic hair rendering. Now there's one more thing that I want to cover now, and that is creating your own hair in Unity. That's why I mentioned at the beginning that it can be important whether the skull underneath the hair is available for you to use. Now here, for example, with Make Human, there is hair, but underneath, it, if we disable it, you also have it, just a skull. Same goes for this character here, also from Make Human. This one doesn't have any hair right now, but when I then go to the to the character, we can then add Hair Designer script to it and create different layers of hair. And this tool pretty much looks and works like uh, you would expect it to work, for example, in Maya or in other, other tools where you can just paint fur and hair onto your character. So you're basically painting different strands of hair. And then you have a lot of customizability in terms of brushing the hair, the length of the hair, and so on. You can scale different parts. And you can also uh, really control the complexity of the hair. So here, I, with the main hair, I created 2,500 strands, and that's about 19,700 triangles. And I can really uh, just, you know, just half that or, you know, really control how complex I want this to be. I have control over the materials. And Hair Designer actually creates all these different textures for you. And uh, you have a specular map and so on that, that can be created for you uh, automatically. And you can really like tweak all the different parameters. I feel like the rendering out of the box from Hair Designer is not the greatest, but the beauty of it is that you can create all those textures and then simply switch over to some of the other shaders. So in this case here, I have 
really I only spent about 10 minutes just plopping just random hair strands on this guy. I put a bit of a moustache, unfortunately it's not really symmetrical or anything. But as you can see right now it's pretty blocky and uh, uh, I changed so many settings already I probably just messed something up. But I think the real strength of this is that you can export the textures. And then uh, let's just lock, lock this layer here. But we cannot change it. And we go to those two layers. So the layers basically create those those objects, uh, those instances of uh, of a mesh here, which is the objects that you need to to look at when you are looking at the the shader. So let's take the hair, and here instead of the atlas uh, shader, we can now use, for example, the more three D shader for the standard hair. And if we now change the uh, render queue so let's say 3000 all of a sudden we have a nice fluffy hair um, we have some highlights here and uh, we can at least use the specular map and the normal map that were supplied or uh, you can use some of those maps if you wish but even out of the box just uh i really like the kind of hairstyle sort of the nice soft hair strands and all of the detail you get basically even when going very very close so while I'm probably not the best designer in terms of like really styling the hair and creating the hair strands, but just out of like 10 minutes of effort, I created this. And I feel like this is a really great result if you uh, don't want to rely on the third party assets here, like uh, you know exporting hair from DAS or iClone or Fuse and so on. Even though Fuse is gonna be problematic because you don't really have any mesh to attach the um, the hair to. Now this doesn't work as well with let's say something like I render people just because the mesh here already includes the hair which means it's elevated up here so it's going to look awkward if you add an additional layer of hair on top here so you're going to have like a, a really bulky head um, so it's really only good for characters that have a sort of a nice clean shaven head like like make human here or if you disable the, the hair from a dash studio character so if i go into the hair disable it and then just basically paint hair designer hair on top of it and then use whatever shader you prefer that is in my opinion probably the best workflow uh, to have full control over the hairstyle the, the complexity of the hair and then also over the shader so it's really sort of a combination of getting a character in removing its hair or not importing it with hair and then adding your hair on top uh, for me for my project that's probably what i will go for in the future because you can really create a lot of different hairstyles with this now this is obviously not free. Your designer comes in two versions, uh, $60 for the normal version, and then if you need the source code, I think it's a hundred and hundred dollars with a plus or pro subscription. This is all I wanted to cover in this tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And if this was any helpful, then like the video or subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching. See you next time.